There we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode one of the Ultraviolet Grasslands, a brand new campaign of mine uh, brought to you uh, by by just uh, the, the amazing mind of, uh, what is it, Wizard Thief Fighter, uh, Luca, Strato Meta Ship, uh, an OSR supplement of heavy metal, of the Oregon Trail, Marco Polo, uh, space fantasy, science fantasy, just everything, uh, stoner doom metal, uh, everything I'm super excited about in my life and uh, i found three um willing participants to come along on this amazing caravan journey uh with me today um so uh yeah you're probably here just to hear me talk uh we're here to see what everyone else is doing and all that kind of stuff so yeah so i'm eric uh pronouns they or he and um yeah so take it away adam no i'm 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 totally here just to hear you talk I, eric i think that's that's most of my plan tonight i'm uh adam he him uh, I've got all of my electronic music production stuff around me that you can't see because I haven't been able to figure out how to make my camera point the right direction. Uh, but uh, partner in crime, uh, I, because I am the other Adam on the podcast, uh, is my friend Sage. Yeah, uh, I'm Sage Latora. Uh, you may know me from Dungeon World, uh, which is me and a different Adam than this Adam, uh, and also a podcast called Another Question, which is with this Adam. I guess I have a type. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I uh, do RPG design stuff, which I haven't been quite as up to recently between uh, having kids and uh, being super active in my day job and uh, hope to get back to a little bit more RPG design stuff eventually, but super stoked to be playing RPGs again. Uh, kind of took a hiatus with our, our youngest one. And so this is super exciting to be back playing games. And uh, Grant, how about you? Oh, and sorry, he, him. I missed a very important thing. He, him, please. Hey, everybody. My name's Grant Ellis. I'm an independent content creator for tabletop role-playing games. I use he, they pronouns. Um, you can find me producing uh, WebDM's Twitch channel for them. I write supplements for 2C Gaming, which primarily does Pathfinder and D&D 5th Edition uh, supplements, but I'm also known for running about 100 different Invisible Sun campaigns, which is a... Uh, narrative player driven uh role-playing game by money cook games uh i i'm pretty uh, active online in the rpg twitter space and uh you can find me on various twitch channels throughout the week uh when i'm not at my day job being a uh, cold-blooded executive for corporate america but i'm happy to be here <laughs> well uh you have a much better way of describing your day job than adam or i did <laughs> Uh, I don't want to talk about my day job. Boring, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, this is this is the this is the cast for the first session. Um, just a, a first little note: we will be having probably guests come through through the, the show as well, uh, which I'm which I'm super excited for. Um, but yeah, probably what we're doing here is uh, we're playing UVG. UVG is a system, uh, or excuse me, it's a setting, but not a system. And we're playing uh, the setting or the system that we I've chosen for tonight uh, for the session is uh, we're doing the the Black Hack Second Edition uh, for this game. And since we all kind of got together and we haven't made characters or anything like that, we're just gonna do it all together today, uh, just like this, all all the same time here. All right. Uh, so I, I wrote up the the sort of things we need to do right now, which would be three six in order uh, first for our stats here. Uh, does anyone feel like they want to be the first person to go? And uh, while you're going and or deliberating that, um, for no, those who, yeah, for those who don't know what the black hack is, it's basically D and D but uh, more streamlined. Uh, a lot of uh, simple things are, are come down to roll under your your stat rather than roll above things. Uh, it's very 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 um, just rules light, uh, narrative driven kind of OSR -y stuff that that fits this setting real well. Uh, it's kind of why I chose it over D and D. Uh, I feel like the um, the weirdness of of the setting and things just couldn't quite be contained in the pretty little boxes that D and D provides, or at least fifth edition. I'm not going to go first because I'm going to uh, admit to being super behind on reading about these things. I am a fan of what I know of both the Black Hack and Ultraviolet Grasslands, but I haven't read all of them. So uh, I'm going to let somebody okay. else blaze the trail, and then I am happy to follow on. No problem. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I can do it. <laughs> Cause, cause, Grant, brave. Yeah. Because Sage is so busy uh, being an amazing person. Uh, he's our uh, gate. You're, you're our audience stand-in. You know, you're the gateway into the rest for everyone else. 
So, so I did really debate well. like how bad I should feel about this. And I figure there is something valuable to showing that like, it's cool to be the least knowledgeable person in a group and we will still have an awesome time together. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and I'm totally here for learning. And I, I do know like the basics of everything. I'm not coming into this. Like, what are we playing guys? So um, Sage, yeah. You have heard. <laughs> yeah. <D &D>. it, okay. <laughs> yes, uh, like I, I have my hardcover version of the black hack right here. And this bookmark shows how far I've read. So like I've, I've read some of it and I read the, the version one all the way through. So like, yes, I have some idea of what's going on. I'm not just making this up as I go along. Right. <laughs> what I hold in my hand is a 20 sided die. No, oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I'm so, Oh, I'm so behind guys. Okay. Messing around aside, I'm Maybe excited Grant. to see this go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Grant, uh, you've you've decided to take point for us. So can you, for starting for character creation, could you go ahead and do the three d six in order? Um, yeah. Alternatively, um, if you want, uh, I created some macros here uh, for like the PC, like like who are you, uh, which is sort of like your background kind of stuff. If you feel like you would rather just jump into it and use those roll twenty macros here to like get an idea before you roll your stats, uh, that's cool with me too. Or after. Uh, I just wanted you to know that those things are there from the uh, from the setting. That so magical. So it, it, to confirm that I understand, you have uh, is that say the example these uh, rollable tables that you have set up. I don't. Uh, I don't think I have my macros. No, I, I forgot to um, make my macros visible to all the players because I'm okay. a dummy. But I went ahead and did that now. I think you should be able to see the three ones. It's PC yeah, starting with, PC who are you, PC why are you on the road. So your starting initial background for your character is the who are you. Okay. So um, let me make sure that I uh, I click this macro and, uh, gosh, cross myself with the sacred T of Tiamat and then... Uh, Go for it. <laughs> I'm a cog flower necromancer lawyer. Wow, I play one of those in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that is real, too, man. Oops, too real. <laughs> yeah. All right. I love it. Yeah. So I cleared. So uh, chat. I I cleared the chat log, so you, you can't see the top of the chat. So I'm gonna bring that down real quick, so you can see that. But yeah, Grant got a cog flower necromancer lawyer. Uh, so just so you know, um, in terms of some pretense of the game, uh, there's like a variant set of all of the general D&D ish races like half dwarves half orcs everything is kind of half mishmash of sentient things that we know as playable races live in the rainbow lands and the rainbow lands are comprised of six but technically kind of like five main color areas a cogflower necromancer lawyer comes probably from the green area the the green territories uh probably from the emerald city or metropolis as it's known uh because that's sort of like the cogflower is sort of like the um the giant church bank um, of, of the area. Um, so you might be working for the church or you work for the Cogflower Corporation, which might be the church, might not be. I don't know. I'll just leave it up to you, but imagine a lot of zany bureaucracy, uh, fear and pain-based currency. Um, so that there's a lot of uh, just that kind of vibe. I, I make sure um, that... Uh, brutal capitalism. C yeah, well, the 501c3s that are found in the uh, ultraviolet grasslands, uh, I make sure that unrelated business income tax that most churches get hit with does not apply to these cogflower churches of the Greenland. Um, so I've, I've got this. Sorry, I used to film tax law courses at Georgetown Law. So, <laughs> so oh, <laughs> but I, man. I just found is I, like... From that description, I've been like, oh, that must be like three rolls added together. No, that's literally one roll on this table. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> All right. So I'm a okay. cogflower necromancer lawyer. What's my next step? Stats, man. Stats. All right. I'm 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 actually going to do them one, one at a time, too. Yep. Uh, so let's see. We'll do uh, 10 for strength. Mm -hmm. Nine for uh, dexterity. Dex. 14 for con. So your I'm, int is seven. All right, well, okay. stop stop there real quick before you roll. Oh, no. Yeah, you got to <laughs> subtract 2d6 uh, plus two. Uh, no, the next stat is just a seven. Oh. Oh, that's right. You're in a different edition than I am. So you're not a very intelligent lawyer. That sounds like a <laughs> wonderful combination. <laughs> probably why you're not <laughs> currently practicing in the Emerald City. Well, does this version allow you to swap two stats? Yes, yes. yes. That's yes. At the, in the later... Around. Right. Okay. Um, yep. Cool. Uh, four. Ooh. Ooh. For <laughs> a four wisdom. for wisdom. Are you oh. going to be wise enough to know what stats to swap? Is the real no, and a four and a four for Chris. <laughs> I am. I am all in. 
all I've, in on these I've, stats. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. Just take the wheel. <laughs> now, now, on the plus side, when you level up, you roll a d20 to see which stats go up, which means that your stats will probably go up really quick. Just have to survive. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, and then I'm allowed to s swap two of these bad boys? Correct. You can swap uh, <laughs> up to two stats, uh, whichever way you want. They don't have to be adjacent to each other. At least that's what I remember when reading it. Yeah, and uh, stats. Yep, and then you pick your class. Uh, this game, uh, I decided not to go with clerics uh, for this game of the for the Black Hack. I just rolled up all of the cleric spells into wizard spells because I feel like magic is so weird in this game. Uh, that if you want to play a cleric or a necromancer or a shaman or some kind of zany bard kind of thing, it's all the same spellcasting class. It's just your your own style. Yeah, chat's begging for me to swap wisdom and charisma, which is very tempting. <laughs> let's let's That's, let's go ahead and swap. Are you uh, are you smart enough to make that choice? <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and swap. Uh, I, I feel like this is going to come back to bite me, but. Now nah. let's go ahead and swap intelligence and uh, constitution. I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh okay. man, I do not envy uh, your stats. Grant, but... you have a yeah. So Grant, you have a character sheet, by the way. Yeah. Um, I think I set it to light mode, so it's a little bit easier to see for you. Um, but go ahead and fill those things in at your at your pleasure. Yeah, I, I've I've got these. Right. Uh, I <laughs> Son of yeah. And are you are you thinking as a cogflower necromancer lawyer? Are you thinking about uh, like what kind of class? Uh, looking at it in general, um, I, I I'm thinking uh, is conjurer in this? Did you say that? Uh, we've got wizard. We've got a few. wizard. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. If you want magic, wizard is the one. Yeah. Magic yeah. wizard. That is that is the way to have magic. That, that's, so you that's, punch that's, things, you stab things, and steal things, or you magic things. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to go with the magic things. That's what we're going to do. I like it. Awesome. All right, so so we have a cog flower necromancer lawyer wizard. Um, currently hmm. being brewed up. Uh, so I gave totally you normal. right. So I'd have a handout for the wizard class if you don't want to open the book or anything like that. Uh, it has some options for things. Uh, the only thing I would I will tell you to pause on or is the equipment selections. You have typically each class has two choices of things, but because we're sort of playing in the ultraviolet grasslands, maybe you don't necessarily have cloth robes. You might have like something you know the better name, which we can look up and that kind of Way stuff, cooler. right? So just yeah, just cooler cooler more uh fitting yeah. names so just put a pin in that uh when you get there and just proceed with the rest of the character stuff and maybe while you're doing that we can jump over to adam while they're yeah, making yeah. i'm in okay i'm, I'm ready and, to to die yeah cool and uh right and uh, i think i think after we do character creation just so everyone knows after we do character creation uh i'll probably update the overlays with our character uh stuff uh, we'll take a quick little break. I'll do that kind of stuff, and then we'll we'll play for a little bit tonight too. So nice. it's, don't don't think we're just doing um doing the boring character creation stuff. All right. So that was anyways, riveting. yeah. All right, Adam, take it away. So on the one hand, I really the who are you macro is just so hot, but on the other hand, it'd be so cool to roll on the legit tables. Uh, but I think I'll just click because we are. On time, black gold industrialist. I'm so happy I clicked. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> so good. Okay, I'm gonna figure that out as time goes on. Let's see. <laughs> we got a nine strength, a fifteen dex, which means nice. a seven, seven, constitution. A seven <laughs> constitution. That seems pretty normal for me. A ten intelligence, seven wisdom, six charisma. We Perfect. are gonna be a great team. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> None of us solid. ever brush our teeth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in real life or uh... <laughs> how how legit is that? Okay, so you know, I'm not sure if I really want to swap. I'm I'm pretty happy with how that ends up going out. Are are you making a thief? You know it. Yeah, I thought so. Oh yeah. I haven't played a thief in so long. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna leave everything exactly as it is perfect beautiful okay. okay sage 
It's your poison. Uh, so yeah, let me figure out if I can roll how to roll this macro thing. I think I see where that is. Uh, that nope, that doesn't roll my thing. Sorry, I. Uh, I uh, I think if you have the macro bar open, yes. it should be next oh. to your names at the In, bottom. Okay. The bottom left. If it's not there, um, just hit the. Journal yeah, I got button. it. Now. Okay. A yellow cape of. Oh, you click. You click oh, the wrong I one. Clicked the wrong one. I mean, we could have intelligent I, items, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Who am I? Yellow cape. A Decapolitan ambassador. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Uh, the Decapolis. Uh, the Decapolis is part of the. Um, technically, it's not yellow and only the yellow lands. It's yellow, orange, and red. It's a confederation of multiple city states, all under. Uh, one Decapolis, uh, sort of like think of like a mega city uh, with different districts. Um, okay. You are you are uh, fierce rivals with uh, the the merchant the merchant uh, republic of Safraj, okay. and um, you're known for spices, uh, mercantilism, and opera. Oh, I can deal with that. Uh, spices, mercantilism, and opera. Yeah. And whatever else you think seems to uh, seems to to vibe with it, because that's kind of the only stuff from the glossary. Uh, okay. So this whole game, don't think this is the um, end all be all. This is the only way to play Ultraviolet Grasslands. This is this is uh, our streams version of the Ultraviolet Grasslands. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm getting a little. Uh, yeah, this is reading very Venice to me. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking that I may be a big like it. Italian. Uh, so let's let's see what my stats look like. Uh, ooh. 14 Ooh, spring. Okay, we may have a fire. Means, means you have a seven in your next. Oh, yeah, seven next. So oh, that's seven con, 15, 15. decks. Uh, no, 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 seven, seven decks, 15 con. Oh, yeah, sorry. I Not that it matters too order. much, but. Uh, I, yeah. I write my I write my character sheets in a different order. Uh, yeah, yeah listen. So, okay, I've got strength and constitution. I am <laughs> almost certainly the fighter because now I've got seven ant. And then let's see, my wisdom is four. Perfect. Yeah, sounds about right. And my charisma is seven. Oh my god! <laughs> so I love um, about this whole group. You're the most handsome. <laughs> oh, for yeah, sure. Da- he's the ambassador. <laughs> the ambassador. It's very important. Uh, I'm tempted to swap something around, but I think I'm a fighting ambassador. I think I'm the like piece at the end of the sword kind of ambassador. Um, like a that, duelist style fighter is that the deal or or maybe i'm almost wondering if like ambassador is a bit of a like uh a <laughs> ambassador yeah totally yeah yeah the, definitely the air quotes whenever he introduces himself like <laughs> i i force deals to happen um mm-hmm. yeah yeah i like it uh, <laughs> yeah i'm starting copying over my sense i don't yeah. i don't think i'm gonna swap anything i'm reasonably <laughs> happy with this uh like being the big brute ambassadors kind of sounds fun. Um, uh, a lawyer, and I'm not an very, industrialist, and an ambassador. Man, and I'm not this... very wise, which works perfectly for the way I play characters. Um, yeah, I I think uh, looking over this, I do not see anything that I'd swap. I'm fine being the tough ambassador. Awesome. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, we're gonna roll some HP. Uh, we can. Um, I just wanted to. I was looking up where else, like what else, black gold is referenced anywhere. Just so you know, uh, Adam. Uh, apparently, it comes from some of the mountains of light in black gold, which is sort of a dwarf area. Uh, and by dwarves, uh, dwarves are not dwarves as we know them uh, in in this setting. Uh, they are actually. It's an acronym for basically like a workers' republic. Uh, they're basically like communist dwarves. Uh, dwarves, they're comrades. Communist black gold uh, yeah. industrialists. They fight. I'm they so yeah. happy. They they're a splinter group off like so like the Redlands are kind of like this uh like an anarchy industrial area, and um yeah this is sort of like a a splinter group of that. Well, Solid. Yeah. I'm going to get a. Uh... A magic item because I rolled a one on my HP. But also, <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> I'm trying to find what happened to my stats after I saved my window. 
Uh, you... I can I can copy them back down. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got them all. We have the chat history. So. Oh, there. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Uh, so I, everyone. Yeah. I'm so, looking at the glossary. Uh, Decapolis, uh, famed for their trading prowess, their industrious, their venal venality, their oligarchs fetishistic fascination with magic of all sorts, and their utter ineptitude at setting up anything to compare with a purple university. This is this is working for me. I can yeah. do this. Right. Um, uh, our game does kick off in the Violet City, home to the Cat Lords that run this place, as well as the Purple Collegium of Magic, uh, one of the dominant uh, places of magic, as as we just kind of heard as a foil to uh, the the Deca Decapolitan uh, Petty Magic. Totally. Okay, let's see what I got for HP. For uh, plus six, nice. Oops. Sorry, I didn't get the plus six in there, so that's nine total. Yeah. I was looking for a magic item too. Aww. Okay. Um, so you got a magic item. Ooh. Yeah. Is that the uh, PC starting with roll? No, I think that's extra. Uh, definitely okay. be doing the thing you're starting with as well. Uh, but also your reason for why you're on the road is also a macro to click. This, this is all taken from the uh, giant table for starting characters from the uh, UVG uh, book itself. Mm. Trying to figure out why a communist would go in with the ambassador. Also, I'm trying to figure out well, is uh, Grant's lawyer, is he a lawyer for necromancers or is he a necromancer who is also <laughs> a lawyer? That's totally I mean, up to he's you. He's a wizard. It could go either way. I, I'm right. I'm, I'm not sure. I've been advised not to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By yourself. Uh, alleged necromancer. <laughs> oh, so, uh, okay, wait. We're on a road trip uh, with our lawyer. Are we basically <laughs> doing fear and loathing in the ultraviolet grasslands? Like, Oh, man, I'm so in. <laughs> uh, Grant, could you roll a D100 for me for your magic item? Yeah. Um, this is all of a different I, table. Yeah, I think I'm familiar. I think the last one is like a prophecy stored in the memories of a gray ooze kept in a jar or something like that. Yeah. like It's such a great... I, 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 I got that in a game, yeah. I... Ooh. Full disclaimer, I played a little little bit of UVG, but it's different every time. It's yeah. cool. Um well, okay. Uh I have to look up this word. <laughs> uh, you got you got a chitin uh you got a chitin booster with two secret stashes and a treacherous love letter. Uh, this is gonna go as right a, into is the a booster like a little bust, so like a little like head piece of a a bustier? A bustier, sorry. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna... I imagine what that means. Armor and chitin would be like made from like a, an insect or something. Yeah, uh, the chitin is a thing. Uh, a, a bustier... Oh, no, a bustier is a uh, form-fitting garment for women. Yeah. But that's not oh. spelled like the one it is from the book. Yeah, that's why I was confused there. Uh, yeah, think of like a... Um, not like a could, not a corset, but like romantic corset. Yeah, I, yeah, I I'm married. It's I, a corset. Yeah. See, <laughs> we should just listen to chat. Disco Dan knows what's up. Uh, See, thanks. <laughs> shout out, shout out to you, Disco Dan. It's a corset. That's why we. Yeah. That's why we have chat. So you have a chitinous corset. Uh, in it, our stash are a stash of two secret stashes of love letters. Well, or two I secret have... stashes and oh, sorry, two secret stashes and a treacherous love letter. Awesome. Well, I have a small waxy jade statue of an octopus man. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's how. That's that's the cool stuff that I get to start with. Did you roll on the table? I know I get to choose the equipment. Uh, oh yeah, I got to choose the octopus man. Yeah. Um, there's no special ability or anything. It's just an octopus man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and then don't forget, uh, every PC also starts with a special UVG item as well. Um, Grant's is, Grant uh, was special and got an additional thing because uh, they rolled really bad on their hit points. That's really or really... Yes, the starting with macro will give you that extra uh, thing that I'm referring to. 
Okay. Uh, every gonna, character gets at least one thing. I accidentally Rockin'. clicked that before, but I feel yeah. like it was out of order. So I'm going to click that again. Yeah. I mean, I like a yellow cape of pure steel silk for the ambassador. That feels okay. I, I, I think I need one after I... Oh, you got the... No, you well, got the yellow cape. You, cape got one. you stole your cape. cape. Is mine now. Oh, man. I have a translucent dinner plate sized force disc <laughs> that is my dinner plate it's part of what i do like the formal dinners on like yeah, yeah. oh man the, this is giving me all kinds of ideas the decapa uh, decapapolitan's version of ch like fine china or like fine <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. we eat off formal. of force discs yeah, yeah. How that green brick is is like legitly useful too so yeah grant got the green brick with the light and warmth of a candle It'll attract every mosquito in the ultraviolet screen. <laughs> I think the first time I played it, I got like head lice that ate away all my intellect. Like the first track down, it's like, oh, I failed my check. I Oh, this ended poorly. Good stuff. And all these abilities on the class, they're all usable from the day one, right? It's not some weird kind of open up ability stuff that I'm... Oh, totally no, 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 no. No, nope. you so get all the abilities the as as a thief or a fighter and wizard. So I'm slightly octopus Howard. I'm not sure yet. You're going. We'll have to figure that out. Um, so the uh, the warrior page in my book here has a table for war trophy, but doesn't explicitly ask me to roll on that table. Do I have a war trophy? Do I roll on this and figure out what war trophy I have? Um, or do you think your do you think your ambassador has a war trophy? I think so, because he's an yeah. ambassador by force. So yeah. he probably shows up with his yeah. trophy. Like... Yeah, then definitely roll on that table. Okay. Depending on what it is, it may even be worn, like just something that he always has on him. Yeah. Oh, be six here. Uh, okay, two, that's... Oh, gosh. A vial of widow's tears. Um, yeah, I think he, <laughs> he uses that as a pretty... Uh, a threat, and he occasionally seasons his food with it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think the wizard also rolls for a familiar and uh, yeah, I've got a lucky charm, which is an oversized moon shaped coin. Ooh, I'm going to have to figure out more details on that. All right. What table do I have for the familiar? Uh, it's in uh, the black on the wizard page. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't put it in the handout. Unfortunately, if okay. you roll D6, I'll just read off the table for you. Cool. Got it. Six. You have a Maybe luminescent like crab. <laughs> Perfect. So good. Perfect. Does it glow? Does your crab glow the same color as your brick? Oh, it's gotta. Yeah, I think it might be like a complementary color, where it's like a glowing green fluorescent brick with sort of this uh, light pink blinking crab. I don't know. We'll f we'll figure it out. I don't want to get them confused in, in night. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you're trying to turn off the candle, but you're actually slapping your crab. Like, it, it happens to all of us. Slapping your crab is definitely a euphemism, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, your, if your character is not named Crab Slapper, <laughs> <laughs> slap a crab one time. <laughs> it's, just, it's your name. Well, let's see, I need to see how many coins I start with, and it is 12. Not yeah. a great roll there. Whatever. I've only got 11, and I'm yeah. the thief. Well, that's because all yours were stolen. Coins. Do we think we oh, have oh. an idea for maybe why we're all together, or do you think we should roll on the uh, the travel quest table to get an idea of why, why we're, what we're doing in the Ultraviolet Grasslands? I would like to roll. I love rolling on random tables. Yeah, oh, standby. Wait, really good standby. Did you, did you all did you all do the why you're on the road? No, we haven't. Okay. I feel so like we, we were missing something. Delivering a letter of inheritance to account that fits. Keeping, keeping tabs on a rival explorer. Ah, uh, my fellow comrades told me. <laughs> Adam, you got a compulsion after meeting a seer. Ooh. That's right. They told me. They told me I had to go. All comrades are seers. Because we all have the same. It's the way it works. Oh, that's good. That's actually good stuff. Okay. 
Uh, I have some, some good stuff for that then. I'm worried. I like my starting gear. I start with a book of grudges. <laughs> this is amazing. I think since I'm an ambassador, this is like a book of um, Decapolitan grudges. Like this isn't just a me book. This sure. is like yeah. an official like government document that I return upon returning from ambassador duty. And it indicates who we have grudges with about what, like this is how we run our government. <laughs> <laughs> Grudge based government. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, is definitely like empty and you just put it up in front of your face and pretend like you're writing in it every time somebody uh, makes you upset. I mean, it's technically my burn book and it government by mean <laughs> girls, but um, uh, no, like I, I think that this is like an official government document and like mm -hmm. I it is we call it the book of grudges, but it's how we return notes on our ambassadorial duties like because this isn't like a, you know, phone home and ask what they want. Like I have to come back and be like, I was pretty sure we wanted a truce. So I negotiated it. Um, but I'm not <laughs> that level of ambassador, obviously. So I come back with the like, the in here wasn't very good. We probably have a grudge with them now. <laughs> <laughs> a, a proposal for a grudge. Mm -hmm. Is there anything special about your book of grudges? Like does, does the deck up like the decapolitan uh, style book? Is it, is it a book? Is it, are, are they written on other, something else? Is it like, um, uh, oh, is it even I think, written? I think it is, it is literally a book, but it is like a, uh, it, it's not written so much as painted. Uh, it's, it's all color based. And so like the, the things that are in there are less like words and more like, uh, this like abstract color based, like a page will indicate the, like the, the, uh, yellow cloaked black gold industrialists looking at you adam uh came and like stole this deal and we bear a grudge against them and that's all indicated as like this abstract swirl of colors or whatever so if you look at it it's just this like to, to anybody but a decapolitan you can maybe hint at it because everybody knows colors but like yeah psychedelic arrival style yeah, yeah. oh it is very arrival oh man i I almost, I almost want to run with that and be like, all the books are the same. And like, they all just have these pages and you indicate what the page means, like through some, like, I, I don't oh. know. I don't... That's fine. I mean, it's, it's weird linguistics. We're good. Yeah. Like <laughs> there, there's some kind of weird ling linguistics to it where like all the books are the same, but you somehow indicate like, yeah. This is good. I like this a lot. Where's your count, Grant? My count? Who? Are they within the city? Yeah, it'd be a good um, Are they on the road? Are they in the like step lands of the nomads, the uh, lime nomads or whatever? Are they out that way? Uh, I guess it depends on the, contra uh, the context of you delivering this letter. Is this a formal thing or is this a personal mission? <sighs> Okay. Is this business to you, or is there something important that needed to be done on a, on a matter of honor or a matter of whatever it is for your necromancer lawyer? I'm 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 the emissary that has been sent for uh, from a rival family of the count. Uh, I need to show up and appear in person because I don't think they would accept a family okay. member without killing them and murdering them. Uh, let's then test your intelligence. Let's see if they're here or not. Okay. So you have to uh, roll under your or equal to your intelligence, but so the character I, sheet should I, be able to do it for you. Okay, I was gonna say uh, maybe that'll probably be. Is it normal? You'll be, you'll be fine. Yeah, if you go to your character sheet and just hit the die button next to your intelligence, it should do the whole thing. I I did that though. It asked like three or four questions. Oh yeah, it asks it asks yeah. if you, there's any additional modifiers and if it's advantage or disadvantage. Uh, yeah. Yep. So you failed. No, they're not here. Um, let me see where they are. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you think you know, where, do you know that they're not here or not with that? When you, when you get here, maybe you probably did like your, a couple initial investigations and you realize they're not here, but do you think you would know where they are right now? Or would you rather play to find out? Eric, my good friend, I charge by the hour. I knew they weren't <laughs> going to be here and intentionally <laughs> here when they weren't here. So I can keep the clock running. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Then, else. <laughs> yeah. Then, then that sounds like you you would know where they are. 
Uh, like bad me. taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> let me the lawyer I've heard. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> the count's hanging out. Uh, so, so, do you want to know? Yeah. The count's hanging out in a place called the Last Sarai, which is sort of like a a big old uh, underground city out in the UVG. Okay. Um, and also, uh, do you want some context for the name of your count? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, cool. Um, they're, they are uh, Lady Toredo Cosmonata. Uh, they got rich as a wine vampire, uh, running the vampire wines in the Redlands. Interesting. I'll put it in chat for you. Cool. Best. Perfect. Um, anyone else want some extra context for stuff? Any questions? No, I'm. I'm. Well, one of the big things about this system uh, is that as you level up, you tell stories from your past, and so I'm. I'm a big person on on leaving background to uh, to later when there's more present context. Sounds good so to me. I think that's what I want for me. Okay, uh, Sage. Do you know the rival explorer you have in mind? Do you think it's a party member, or do you think it's uh, someone else? Uh. I think it's a rival of the Decapolitans. Like it, it isn't somebody that I have a particular grudge against. It's like the, uh, probably the, there was some note there about the um, purple university. I think it was. Uh, yeah. Their yeah. magic is. Yeah. We're, we're, we wish we could be the purple university. I'm sure that it has something to do with the purple university uh, and like some, trade mission for magic stuff they're on or something um so yeah i'm supposed to be trying to keep pace with them uh and beating them to any any deals they try to strike okay cool um let me make a note of that i also like one of the my starting things is uh war paint and i think war paint is how you write in the book of grudges like sure you can paint yourself with it as well oh, so but good. like you you're it is literally like the way that you record things in the book of grudges i think all the pages are some kind of like there's a template to each page like the colors are mostly already there and then you add your own war paint on top of it to indicate in this kind of like arrival style abstract language like all the little strokes indicate exactly what we what like reason that we hate them and exactly what they owe us and exactly what we will extract from them and all this in this like mixture of colors um yeah and uh i think what is in your book of grudges is a way that they limit your statue like your um status as an ambassador so like the since the template implies like which things can be owed and stuff i can only make certain levels of grudges um because i can only paint certain colors on top of these and so i can't like say that we begrudge them something that'll send our entire army because I'm just some low level operative. I can only be like, we'll probably tax you a bit more or whatever. I'm here for mm. it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I have a two handed weapon that I think is somehow related to being able like to, to my role as an ambassador. I I'm thinking either like a huge hammer. That's also like a, a gavel ceiling thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, like a gavel and a ceiling stamp. Like one side has a crest on it and the other side is like a gavel and it's how we like <laughs> break deals and seal things and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. huge hammer. So you're like a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, sign, when, sign someone who does the signing of the official things, the witness. When yeah, you have to go to yeah, UPS um, to do the witness of like documents. Oh, we have we have a lawyer and we have notary, uh, notary, a notary, a notary. A notary. <laughs> I'm a notary. I'm an ambassador notary. A, my, a lawyer, my, a notary, yeah. and an industrialist. We are full on Oregon trailing over here. Yeah. We just need twelve grandfather clocks. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's some uh, some specific UVG equipment that I want to just uh, briefly talk about. So if there's anything in your character that you think like you have a weapon of some kind that think that you think sounds cool, or maybe like, hey, um, it would make sense maybe if I could have something that's different than what's on the list. Uh, we can we can talk about that too. So like the if you guys wanted, for example, like this the setting has sort of like guns and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you thought it would make sense if you had some sort of gun with some bullets, uh, I start with that. a D8 bow and arrow. And yeah. I am generally okay with that. Yeah. Uh, but if we start going really heavy firepower, then probably a rifle or something would be better. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe after I get Eden, I can respawn as a somebody that well, holds a rifle. 
Well, like, I have no problem, like, doing a quick thing like that. Like, do you want to push your luck here and say, like, you, you were able to get yourself a, you know, uh, there's stuff like a, uh, a porcelain prince pistol is probably the best thing you'd get right now. Uh, no but way. you might be able to get a scavenger bolter. I think, I think bow and arrows are the, uh, are the weapon of the masses because you can build them <laughs> yeah. yourself with your own hands. So okay. it's a very dwarven weapon. Okay. And uh, even though I'm an industrialist, you know, I'm not putting people to work making bullets for me. So, yeah. Yeah. What does an industrialist of, uh, was uh, you're a communist industrialist? Industrialist. <laughs> red. That's red right. Before bullets. We are, are you, a, uh, we're a worker owned cooperative. Well, are uh, you are you against type uh, there? Uh, yeah, so you're just you prefer worker co-op. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I don't actually have the the black gold yet. I'm just, yeah. you know, our workers, aka me, by myself, <coughs> own all of the black gold that we have been able to to grab our hands on, which is nothing as of yet. Okay. So, so you're That's like why the, we're heading out. You're you're like the base recursion case of yeah, <laughs> yeah or exactly like. <laughs> Somebody has to get there first, <laughs> and then you just keep going up, right? Works for me. But I'm always talking about my company in the we sense, even though it's a company of one. So, yeah. At first, oh, at you, first that, recently in court, are you an LLC? Like, <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> when you said we, I was like, my we company, like Scottish dwarven, like my we company. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> No, I, I'm not doing. I'm not pulling the Scottish because I can't. I can't do accents. Yeah. Oh, I've been reading right. a whole lot of Uncle Scrooge to my daughter, so I can do a mm. Scot. I can do an awful Scottish accent, but I can do a lot of Scottish accents. Yeah. Awful Scottish accent um, is the correct one yeah. for Scrooge. Yeah. Um, cool. Yugi's I, got it in the chat. I'm I'm here uh, for it. This is good. Okay. Um, it's then... just futures. We're trading in futures. That's the way this is going. <laughs> I, I don't think you can. Be a workers collective. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I own all of the company and I am all the workers, thus <laughs> fully worker owned. Company. It is fully worker owned. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Living the dream. That's I'm, right. I'm extremely excited about like our uh, ambassador who ambassadors through violence, our <laughs> uh, capitalist who capitalist through communism, and our lawyer <laughs> who lawyers through low intelligence. <laughs> so like, great, everybody. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have like? Do we, are we thinking of names for our characters yet? Uh, yeah, kind of, we're I'm, just kind of I'm the fresh. last. We're we're in the home stretch here of uh, character creation. Yeah, I went ahead and named uh, this wizard Lockloin. Lockloin. Nice name. I'm Vesh, same as my other four brothers and sisters, and my mother and father. Uh oh, man, I had a great name earlier today when I was trying to think of something and I am having a hard time with it. Um, I wanted to go almost, okay, let me bounce this off you guys. I was thinking of going like ridiculously uh, like historical almost with like a weird anachronistic like Herodotus or something like that. Like something yeah. really out of place and weird. And I mean, he is from the Decapolitan like ambassador and something kind of over the top sounds fine, but is that going to fit with like our naming here? Like, I like Herodotus. Works for me. Herodotus, I, Vesh, and, and Lockloin. That's is, yeah. it's not bad. Uh, There's a random table for names too. If if oh. that's, if if you would rather, because I know I know you have a, a I, you're a fan I of tables. Do love that. I I think I'm in this case. I'm I don't actually think you going can to roll on that table though. Or, or Herodotus is fine. I, I think I'm going to go with Herodotus. I'm kind yeah. of liking this uh, this feeling of being a little out of like out of sync like th this is a a trading empire that is trying to call back to glory days of another empire kind of because it sounds like uh, between the fact that we're trying to replicate the purple, purple university and stuff i see this as one of those like we're this empire then the decapolitans like all our names are cold from older history that we're trying to reclaim as our own 
And so, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Herodotus here as like a nod towards this, like, this is totally not a current name, but we, the ambassadors and stuff have these ridiculous out of place names. Yeah. Brent, you were all in on that too, right? I was, I was all about it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. Okay, cool. And Herodotus yeah. can shorten to hero, yeah. uh, which I think you really want it to. Yes. I'm, I'm uh, but fine nobody else is going to do it. Hero protagonist as a, uh, yeah. Um, Cool. I like this. Uh, yeah. it, it seems to fit the genre. I'm good with it. Lock yeah. Loin is the junior partner or senior partner in the firm? Or is it solo? <laughs> I was going to say, hate to admit it, I'm the paralegal. <laughs> <Not actually. laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> they haven't yeah. checked to see if I'm taking the bar or not. No, I, I'm the uh, I'm the senior partner, but the junior is going to be taken over while I'm off traveling the old, ultraviolet grasslands. Uh, Grant, have you chosen your spells? I'm going to. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see. It's a D4 so, plus two spells. So 1D4 plus two spells? Yeah, and I have a handout with all the mishmash combined cleric of... Yeah, cool. Whoop. So yes. four spells. Dotus is definitely going to be the nickname. Yeah. <laughs> Dotes. Nice. And... Uh, Dotes goats. As a level one character, do I simply get one level one spell? Nope. You have a combination of level one, level two spells. Oh, I get four. That's right. Right. Sorry. I keep thinking of the different uh, uh, character build from the Conjurer, which I think was the last one I looked at a while ago. Okay. So I get four combination of one and two. So let's grab sleep. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Things will be falling out of the skies. <laughs> a good one. Right. Yeah. So let me add. <laughs> yeah. Cast sleep on yourself. Yeah. Roger says for feigned death. <laughs> That's a uh, not going to say I haven't done that in a game with Eric running, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just looked it up. Uh, so the way spell casting works in this game, uh, it's just it's the spell casting stat. So it's intelligence. You roll. If you already rolled it before, <laughs> you roll a disadvantage. If you fail, uh, you forget the spell. Right. Very easy. All right. The friendly Vancey and magic. I have, I feel like we probably don't join up before hitting the caravan. I feel like we end up on the caravan together on accident. I can't so, see a really useful reason for us to be old friends or generally happy with each other. And I think it'd be a great, weird kind of combination of random people. So um, I like that idea too, but I'm going to need one of you to be the person who kind of like, if it's not going to be all of you, one of you has sort of foot the bill to sort of begin the caravan because it costs a little bit of money to to do that unless you're deciding to partner with a caravan that's already going out it's got to be the lawyer he's getting paid can, for this entire uh, yeah. thing i feel like yeah i'm i'm like a a volunteer ambassador almost like <laughs> yeah so the way i've played this before and let me know what you think about this eric um i've always sought out a financier or a financier in to, to send us out which might even be yeah. a codified term in the game um a patron. Look at how fancy we're getting. A financier. Yeah. Yes, a financier. A financier. Yeah, you want to you want a uh, Violet City Aristio to to fit the bill here for you? Yeah, or my wife. Yeah, it's for yeah. her wealthy family. Yeah. I, or are you I think charging it to the company? I have to. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Too close to home, Eric. Um, let's. Uh, no, I think I need to find someone to foot the bill. I need to sell them on the idea, like an entertainment lawyer. I've written the yeah. pitch. Okay, cool. Um, so then let's let's take a quick break, um, so I can um, basically write up the notes here. Of what we got, I can change the overlay so it has that kind of stuff there, and then we can begin with us getting squared away and getting this caravan set up, and then a little bit of shit uh, going down in the city, and go from there. Okay, sounds good. Cool. All right, so don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be back in about five minutes or so. Uh, just hang tight, uh, listen to some sweet jams, get some water, uh, stretch your legs, and we'll see you on the other side of the break.
Okay, uh, we're back. Uh, Sage will join us in just a second. Uh, but in the meantime, we were we wanted to just go live because uh, five minutes were up. So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back here to the second part uh, the, of the Black Hack version of the Ultraviolet Grasslands, where we have a uh, Lock Loin, uh, the neck. <laughs> what is it? What? How? How would you uh, describe yourself? I'm a uh, necromancer lawyer. I, I I would describe myself as I deal with uh, uh, posthumous law. I'm an expert in posthumous law. And <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. This is gonna go deep. Oh, this is tapping into. This is tapping into my background a little too deeply. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So a cogflower necromancer lawyer. What's the cogflower part? I, I didn't read oh, into that too much. I can help you with that. Uh, cogflower means that you are part or affiliated with the cogflower church, uh, which is the dominant uh, money-based faith over in the uh, Greenlands. Oh uh, my part, gosh. Uh, there, it's part of the Emerald, uh, Emerald City or Metropolis. I deal with essentially their uh, their estate planning and distribution. <laughs> essentially, after they pass on, uh, I'm there to speak with the corpses and make sure that they uh, they fall in line with what the church feels uh, oh, so should be the uh, distribution of their wealth um, after their passing. In a very real and legally binding way. <laughs> So they're sending me into the ultraviolet grasslands. <laughs> oh no! Should be That'd easy. Be the worst. Yeah, it's like, look, we've lost some family members. They they died next to the green colossus or the grass colossus. Uh, <laughs> can you speak with their bodies and validate the will? Huh. All right. <laughs> you gotta be. You gotta be paying. Getting yeah. the hazard pay. All that You're, kind of stuff. Yeah, the side quests that I can I'm come up with Lock Loin are going to be incredible. <laughs> Or so. It's gonna be really weird and really fun. <laughs> it's right. uh, very course, similar to the real life true story of me calling Ja Rule and getting him to give me his social security number over the phone. Back <laughs> when I was a casting director in films, it was like uh, these conversations. <laughs> We're live, Sage. Yes. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Sorry about that. Uh, no you're problem. good. On a couple things. Just no. rolling back in. We got yeah. post-mortem estate planning, which I see on your business card as one of like many possible <laughs> things scrolling along the bottom type of stuff. Now, Adam, how would you describe your character for us? Vesh of the family Vesh. We don't have first names because that's something that you would personally have. And we don't believe in personal ownership is uh, the... <laughs> the owner operator of a one man corporation uh, who is currently trading in black gold futures, but hopes to be trading in black gold presents and pasts in the very <laughs> hopefully near uh, moment. Future. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very good. Oh yeah. Fesh is really tall for a dwarf. Uh, and I think that they think they're more sneaky than they are. Um, yellow cape kind of gives a lot of things away, unfortunately. Um, and then they uh, they use bow and arrows because it's the people's weapon. Nice. Mm -hmm. How about you, Sage? Uh, yeah, so Herodotus is like a, a warrior ambassador of the Decapolitans. Uh, he carries his Decapolitan grudge book and wear, war paints, which uh, since he's a a minor ambassador. The only things that he can write into his book of grudges are minor grudges. Um, he, he doesn't have the power to negotiate anything significant. We also view like uh, positive trade deals and stuff as grudges. Uh, so yeah, every, everything is a grudge. Um, and he carries his uh, seal of office, which is a two-handed war gavel. Uh, one side is used <laughs> as to seal things, and one side is used to like bring things to conclusion, uh, both uh, ceremonially and physically. Um, and uh, yeah, he he follows the Decapolitan rule of uh, negotiation through strength. 
Um, and he is on the caravan to uh, keep tabs on arrival from the Purple University, who are uh, the Decapolitans envy the Purple University's uh, strength of magical knowledge. And so he has this kind of um, grudging respect for anything magical. Okay, well, that's very good then. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I think I have to come up. Uh, you are also here on a particular um, to keep tabs on Arrival. Uh, yeah, the Arrival, like, uh, I, there must also be somebody from the Purple University on this uh, caravan in some way. Um, or somebody, like, related to the Purple University, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily... I mean, I think we all, compared to your normal kind of first level characters, we all have such like dramatic roles that I feel like whoever I'm keeping, like it's gotta be like a an adjunct, adjunct professoriate of the Purple University or something, some like ridiculously overwrought title that's actually just like the guy who teaches Transmutation 101 or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, now I have to come up with something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, magic. I I just I magistera. Uh, sure. so let's let's go with um, a hmm, a judi a judica. Sure. Uh, a judica magistera. Are their name is Sedoba Malapensa. Um, they are a purple sorcerer. Um, yeah, uh, they also have, you've heard disturbing rumors of this person. Um, you've heard that they have a, uh, a vi quite a violent streak about them. And apparently, okay. um, they've caught wind of some sort of, uh, some sort of deal or some sort of, um, nice, uh, letter note map, something like that to somewhere in the vi grasslands and they've, uh, went after it and you're, you're kind of tailing that trying to find leads and see what they're doing with that they're uh, uh following some kind of map into the grasslands so that what you said yeah they have some sort okay. of map or something uh okay. you're you're that's sort of the the only trail you have you're kind of on the road maybe looking for clues sure and and just to be clear like am i looking for clues and they're not here or are they are on the same caravan also like Oh, that's a good question. Um, what do you think? Do you think they would be going? Are you are you keeping tabs like, directly like close to them, or is this a person that you're like kind of catching up to in a similar way that um, Grant's sort of trying to deliver a letter to someone? Out there? I think this is probably catching up to. Like, it seems a little convenient that I've managed to get like into the same caravan, caravan, and they wouldn't kick me out. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think they're they're currently out with the Lime Nomads. Okay. That's as far as you know. Okay. Uh, that works for me. Um, and Comrade Vesh is just a, a entrepreneur, so they don't have to worry right. about anything directly out there other than money, 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 money. I mean, I need to find some black gold. Right. So <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the the immediate right. destination that I'm looking for. So. Um, as spoke as before the break, we spoke to um, with with Grant. Uh, Grant's Grant's Lock Loin is going to be sort of the person sort of footing the the first initial caravan gathering together, and they were looking for a patron here, and uh, you will uh, you will find one by one of the the wonderful uh, cat lords of this city. Um, so, uh, let me give you a little bit of information about them. Stand by. They are named. I want to make sure I get it right. Yes. So you you're meeting not just the cat lord, but obviously their human attendant. Uh, just for the record, have you met a cat lord before? Vesh is not. You're mutagrant. One hundred percent yes. Okay, so then you know that they have snake-like tails and hands, uh, like little tiny human hands. Mm -hmm. Grant, did you meet them when they were alive or afterwards? Uh, I've met multiples. Some were living, some were dead. Um, I've actually attended two cat lord funerals. Uh, they were both beautiful ceremonies, uh, but I shed no tears. 
can't do that well on the job. Um, yeah, but this like physically can't, or like you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, cool. Botch, botch surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you're meeting with Wizviz Posh Ojit. Uh, specific. They are the handler of the Cat Lord, uh, the Horn Cat, by the name of of uh, of Sleekums. Um, it's very customary that um, Wizviz will be holding the cat, but you not address the cat. Mm-hmm. You you know that because you have met one before, but you do know that the cat uh, runs everything. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> the question here is: uh, I'm gonna give you. Let me give you a couple options here. Is Sleekums deep in the uh, the purple university? Is Sleekums further out in uh, the trading, wheeling, and dealings of the sort of like mercantile bazaars of the Violet City? Um, or are they more of the underworld, unsavory type? Underworld, unsavory type. And I'd uh. like to assume that they're in as much trouble as I am, and they uh, they need the cash. They need to invest quick and flip it. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's stand by then. Let me see if that's true. Oh boy. How how true is it? Okay, awesome. Yeah, it is definitely true. Um that's that's wonderful. Desperate that's, times call for desperate measures. Yeah. Uh very much so. Uh cool. So then we will be opening up in let me find a good name for this place. Oh, that's interesting. Uh Yeah, uh we're meeting up in the Al Flongen. Uh, the Alflongen is a drinking dive of the Abnegators. Uh, it is, uh, let's just say it's it's supposed to have a nice religious vibe to it. Um, in fact, anyone entering uh, without a, uh, they have a dress code or, or beauty standard to get to this place. You Do you have at least a 10 charisma, Lockloin? <laughs> I've got any, uh, I think maybe <laughs> only the fighter has right. a 10 charisma. Oh, no. I think we have maybe a 10 charisma all combined. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, then um, this place is off the beaten path of the bazaar. Oh, let me put on the right music for this. Um, Love this playlist. I just found a bunch of cool free music uh, for this stuff. Okay. Um, so going to Alflongen. Uh, it's a faux religious place. Um, however, uh, you are definitely going to be accosted by two large bouncers uh, going in there, kind of judging you and judging your looks. Uh, business or not, um, these two uh, bouncer priests um, will either bless you or blaspheme or call you a blasphemer uh, based on your, your presence. So what do you do as you approach these two who, um, there's no real hiding them. There's no real back door to this place. It's very much like a, it's a tight knit, place it's a good place for meeting people uh because of their uh regimented religious hierarchies here but um so let let me describe myself as well so they can see exactly uh, who i am so uh lock loin is uh lean features very gaunt on uh lock loin's head he wears an elaborate headdress of uh, metal tentacles that kind of uh, feel about um, and, and probe in the air. And around my neck, I have what's described as an angry shrunken head. And it's kind of grimacing. And every now and then it belches. Um, and uh, so I approach, you know, kind of hand over the mouth of the angry shrunken head. Uh, the tentacles wrap themselves up very tight and kind of uh, fall back meekly. Uh, but I stand proud uh, and, and approach them. Uh, my my dress is meek, but my eyes are strong. So, mm. Perfect, then. Uh, one of them holds their hand out to you and says, High five. So yes, traveler. Your eyes speak of much truth, but eyes can also be deceiving. Um... They're clearly looking for either uh, maybe um, depends on how yeah, you're, you're savvy. You know what you're meaning here. This might be a bribe situation, although you yeah, never bribed these people before. It might be like 
fast talk them here. Uh, it might be that stand aside, I have business and just smug them. You know, you have, apparently you're meeting someone here. Uh, how do how do you approach this or something else, right? What, what do you do? I, uh, I could be deceiving, but donations can't. And I have some coins that uh, I hold out. Yeah. If I give the donation to you, surely you'll find it makes its way to the treasury, right? Yeah. Uh, and may yeah make a make a charisma check at advantage. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need all the charisma <laughs> check I can get. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Uh, I've got some advantage. I have no modifier. Um, I got a success. <laughs> you actually got a success. So Grant's charisma score is literally a four. Uh, this right. game is roll much. under or equal to your stat. You have a 20% chance no. of succeeding. At least in the book I have, it's roll under only. Oh, it's Not roll under only. To. Oh, boy. <laughs> there is a... Uh, <laughs> you take the hand of the bouncer, and uh, slipping in that hand is a few of your coins... Uh, they close their hand, feeling the nice uh, cold uh, feeling of the um, cog Canadian flower quarters. coins. Yeah, the, the Canadian <laughs> cog flower coin quarters. Uh, they say, thank you, Rainbow Lander. Uh, they look at you. You clearly do not match the beauty standard for the rest of the people, as the camera kind of can see inside the door. Uh, but they say, your kind are always welcome here. Please. And they take the... Um, they're not drapes. Think of sort of like those, uh, like butcher shop or industrial sanitation, like drippy, like car yeah, wash yeah, plastic yeah. things hanging uh, down, right? Uh, that's that are sort of vaguely um, uh, chameleon color, like like they can uh, prismatic. Uh, and you just, you you part their ways through there. Uh, you can see new. You hear the sounds of uh, several instruments, the smells of different spices and smokes. Uh, the the always aromic of uh, smell of cheap beer no matter what setting and world it is it's <laughs> still there um yeah uh are you so looking around uh i think you can probably find uh whiz viz uh and slinkums uh they're sort of in the if the, you can, it's generous for me to call it a vip section uh it's it's basically just a nice little booth there um there it's are a couple other section yeah um there's a uh, another cat like crosses your path. Another black cat crosses your path in front of you and kind of like hisses at you um, before going like uh, going back to its owner, who's currently talking to uh, what looks to be like a like a, a, a half robot. Like the bottom legs of it are sort of like a a, a golem, um, but the top part of him seems to be some sort of uh, like ha some sort of ling of some kinds, like a halfling or or quarterling or something. Um, people of all shapes and sizes are here. All right. Um, my uh, crab points in Wizviz's direction. Yeah. And that's where I will head. Ready to make a deal. Figure yeah. out what uh, what percentage <laughs> yeah. and how quickly Sleekums is going to need a return on investment. So. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so 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 Wiz Wiz Viz, uh, is is wearing um, bright pink uh, robes like a like a nice bathrobe, uh, right? Uh, underneath his his shirt is just like a, a very very faint, um, almost like almost like a, like a fishnet uh, of that's like white. Uh, he's no pants and beautiful like crocodile like uh, like knee high boots. Uh, in in like tucked underneath uh, Wizviz's arms uh, is this beautiful uh, one of the most beautiful cats you've ever seen. However, it only has one eye, uh, which is something you've never seen a cat have before in the city. Hmm. It's and, not beautiful it's, with the exception of the having an eye. It's it's notable because you've never seen a cat that only have one eye before. Can and this cat, cat lord, cat lords have lizard tails and tiny human hands. Yes. So this cat has. Okay, good to know. Yeah. This cat, oh, this cat also has those features. Really paints a picture. <laughs> All right. So me... yes, traveler, says Wizviz, who speaks to you and then finally turns their head and looks at you. The cat is unblinkingly looking at you this whole time. Okay. Um, um, Wizviz's eyes, uh, there's no pupils. It's just like black. Good. They're probably I addicted to ca uh, cat coffee. 
Okay. Um, did you receive news of my coming, or do we start from the beginning? No, you. M no beginnings here. Only ends and money. That is why we're both here, right? Yeah, it seems that uh, money, or rather the lack thereof, has brought hard times upon the great cat and he who carries uh, them. Um, Come, however, sit. Uh, yeah, I sit immediately where I'm yeah. at. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, I imagine I <laughs> slink. Uh, yeah. Slink onto a couch, recline. Yeah, you know, uh, I imagine sort of like a half, uh, half donut like couch, right? Um, think uh, there's no, there's no back to it. Instead of just really nice, comfy like bean bags kind of chairs. I'm, I'm, in. Um, I'm in. Think <laughs> of get get a little bit of like a hookah bar kind of vibe. Um, rather, but rather than hookah in the middle is an elaborate decanter setup, uh, clearly for brewing like very fresh uh, cat coffee. Uh, you see, there's a there's a cup there. Um, there's a, that's in front of uh, uh, Wizviz, and there's an empty cup where you would be. Um, and uh, Sleekums or Wizviz says to you, says, now before we discuss business, we shall drink. Do you drink some cat coffee? Mm. You might first ask if it's decaffeinated. Decaffeinated. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. That's a <laughs> no. This looks like this looks like the real deal. Uh, there is there. It is not decaffeinated. <laughs> um, see, it's. Do you know anything about cat coffee? Let me ask you this question, Lock Loin, because that isn't actually a really funny joke, Sage, with uh, a reason for that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I typically, I typically have the interns make it, so I'm less familiar with the intricacies. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Do you want to um, make an intelligence check? No. I don't think I do. Uh, it's just so you know that it has. It's a gentle narcotic. Gentle, eh? Mm-hmm. I'm all in for this cat coffee. <laughs> if I'm not naked <laughs> by the end of this conversation, it wasn't good coffee. So I just <laughs> down it goes down the yeah. hatch. <laughs> right. The intra cat sees. <laughs> as, as, as noted in chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm cool. here for the puns. Yeah, it would. Um, it if you would drink cat coffee on its own, it could actually restore uh, ability point damage, uh, especially mental uh, points. But oh, um, so let's go get some ability point damage and, yeah. then, uh, <laughs> and then drink it. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Wizviz says this, but clearly it's it's um, Skleekums who kind of gets out of the hands and kind of goes up behind the back, kind of like a shawl, like and like does that nice little rub on the back of, of uh, Wizviz. Uh, and um, Wizviz goes, I just, this is my own special batch. Made it this morning. And does a little like face nuzzle to Wizviz. It's one of those things where, you know, I, I, I've had coffee in my day and uh, I don't want to offend Sleekums, but uh, Sleekums might want to work on their diet. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, Do you tell him uh, that. No, no, no. I'm here for business. I, I, I appreciate I appreciate the, the, the fine brew and the cat coffee sleekums. You, you make a fine pot and, uh, you know, best of health to you and yours. Uh, but in order to ensure that happens, you need money and there's money to be had. It's just laying out there on the grass why they call it the grasslands it's green like money yeah. and we're getting together a caravan isn't it and we need an investor you need an investor well and i have product that needs to be delivered i have a lot well, more batches of this looking to you? offload i uh, know someone out in the in last sarai they don't get good cat coffee out there these days, or so I'm told from the princes. Hey, you're 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 not wrong, and we do excellent delivery jobs. Finest delivery people here in the UVG. <laughs> I 
I like you. You do not ask too many questions. <laughs> oh, when you already have all the answers, there's not much to ask there, yeah. sleep. Uh, we, your, your, your grace. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You have what some might say a mind on their money and money on their mind. This aesthetic pleases us. Well, there's plenty of more where that comes from, I say with a wink. Yeah. <laughs> my tentacles kind of unwrap themselves, and yeah. my crab, oh, then. who has the name, uh, crawls up and then hides in my robes. Oh, well then, this is much easier uh, than you think. This goes swimmingly. Nothing possibly could be going wrong from this. Everything seems to be turning up Loch Loin today. Huh. Everything's coming up Loch Loin. Yeah, uh, cool. Uh, so then, if you don't mind, we kind of smash cut then to sort of getting things kind of squared away. Um, and let's talk about maybe, like, what kind of caravan and things you're getting. Uh, yeah, so if you have no problem with Sleekums uh, footing the bill here and, and taking their, their cat coffee, no questions asked, uh, yeah. We just deliver it. the cat coffee. We don't ask how it's brewed or what's yeah. in it. Yeah, I so think you, what Loch Loin's saying is that Cash rules everything around him. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. And that works for that works for this. Um yeah, so I have I don't have a caravan sheet set up for you yet. I mean I just made a character sheet just for taking notes there. But um you definitely now have goods when we're getting this sort of like setup process of what kind of things and supplies you want to bring on our journey. Uh but you definitely have goods for cat coffee. Um you have cat coffee, it's worth uh at the minimum two hundred. Uh, but you apparently there is uh, a, someone in the last Sarai that needs it. A sack of cat coffee. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Worth two hundred. Yeah, it is not ground. It is is still raw. I'm not gonna look into that bag. And we um, do apparently. It smells know pretty bad. It, it's full of what appears to be like crystals, as well as like larger chunks of something of some sort of mineral, like some sort of long rock. Almost like a like a tube or some kind of tubular rock or crystal. But cat coffee is known to restore uh, ability damage. Yeah, when it's brewed, right? When it's brewed, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just. You have the raw. I mean, you, you have the that, raw stuff I'm, in this bag. I'm pretty sure at some point we're gonna end up skimming some off the top to try to get rid of our own <laughs> ability. Da- like, I I've played role playing games with Adam. And <laughs> no, how this is gonna yeah. go? Oh. You know, um, you factor that into our losses and damages budget. Um, it's <laughs> yeah. Uh, for 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 more edification, uh, you're delivering it to Black Helmet sixty plurality. Ooh, that is a serious distance. Yeah, if I remember the map. So you might want to be doing some other other gigs to help pay the way over there. But this is this is the person you're looking for there. Um, Sleekums has mentioned that uh, this person is part of the private military police force at the last Sarai and the cat coffee can help keep people up and uh, awake for their shifts and stuff that's what they said I I trust them I have no reason not to Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hmm. All right. So caravanning, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about caravanning um, and getting some supplies. And this is probably where you all kind of meet, right? As as Lock Loy needs to get some groups together, uh, in and just by by trick or by deed or or some maybe even by a seer, uh, you you realize that this is the time to go, uh, and you all kind of um, meet and begin to assemble and work out some deals with each other about where to go and what to do. Hmm. Um, I'm I'm cool here with sort of like doing the torchberry, like maybe we just talk it out as players in town, maybe a little bit of role play. Uh, depends on how y'all want to do, right? Because I know sometimes meeting each other in characters isn't always the funnest thing, but like it depends. It all depends on how you guys want to want to do this, right? Um, yeah. So there's a couple uh, caravans in the book that are starter caravans that I think work pretty well here. Um, as well as there's sort of some market research and things we got to do looking for supplies in different areas uh, that could help with um, determining what kind of goods you want to buy and pick up and deliver elsewhere. So that, I feel like I feel like we're somewhere close to Small Trader. Yeah. Um, not as big as Dungeon Exploration. No. Uh, 
No self-propelled golem tank. That one's fun. <laughs> With the <bolted laughs> houses. <laughs> I mean, it's your budget, man. Uh, but yeah, even small trader is a little larger than we technically need. Um, but it's probably just about maybe maybe one or two more because we need the mules for it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It comes with yeah. five mules. Well, yeah, but not just for riding, but for holding sacks of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I was always terrible at Oregon Trail, so somebody else is going to have to do that right. uh, logistics work. Right. And so while we're kind of plotting and scheming that amongst each other, I'll, I'll talk to mm-hmm. chat for a second about how this kind of works and how the game's going to uh, play out at this part of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way Ultraviolet Grasslands works is that it's a point crawl to destinations, and the distance that this game wants us to think about is in the terms of weeks, not days, as you would normally expect in a hex crawl or something like that. Uh, instead, uh, these long, drawn-out um, travels and journeys uh, require supplies, and the more supplies that you take with you, the better off you are, but... At the same time, that means there's less space for you to kind of make money. You're just kind of subsisting, going from place to place. Uh, so you have to try to find a great, a nice balance between eating your supplies, finding some on the road, bringing some trade goods with you, meeting other people who need those goods in high demand, and kind of stringing things along as you make your way uh, through the grasslands. So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, so the mules are yeah. going to carry uh, two sacks, I believe. Yep. Um, uh, an individual can carry one sack. A sack is uh, equivalent to one week's of supplies. Yeah, but if we're also carrying our own stuff, I mean, it's going to be a fun time. Yeah. I guess we'll eat through I mean, it. We'll definitely be encumbered. I mm-hmm. don't have much of my own. Like, I have my it's own stuff. It's a huge right. hammer. Yeah, but I mean... As long as I'm not carrying anything for anybody else, I'm good. Like I, I just need people to go with me so that I'm not ambushed on the road. Uh, I, I could kind of care less about what we're carrying. So I'm only going to carry something if we need to. To like so. the the way that Herodotus is approaching this is like, uh, I need to go here. If I need to carry a sack to get there, sure. But that's the only way I'm carrying a sack. Um, like, he, he wants to go on this caravan, but he could care less about the success of the caravan. He just needs people going in this direction. That makes sense. So that distance, give us a week's, like, estimate for so, uh, that destination. Well, yeah, well, I can help you out there. I can do one better. I'll look at you and your fancy map. map. Oh, I have the map. Look at that. Wow. Like cheating. So, uh, we're in the Violet City, right? This is the caravan. We're in the Violet City. Um, and one of the places that we just heard about, the Porcelain Throne, but we really want to go down to the last Sarai. Uh, and so different ways of getting there. Um, each of these dots has a number associated with it, and that's the amount of weeks it takes to get there. So, for example, to get the last Sarai, the most direct route will take a minimum of three weeks. So three stacks of supplies must be eaten to get there. Um... Now, there are some things you can do that could uh, help you out here. For example, it takes two weeks to go to the Lime Nomads. Um, But I know um, that might be something that Sage wants to do. I just was looking at the map and was like, oh, Lime Nomads. That appeals to me. Um, Yep. Or we could breeze through the low road and the high, uh, which is sort of like an apocalyptic highway. Um, The Porcelain Throne is also a, a great place that always is in demands of goods. Uh, the Porcelain Throne is uh, has a bunch of really cool people living there. Um, mul- these multitude, uh, multi-body uh, consciousness individuals. So how much cash are we talking about? Um, that we have lying around? Um, bec- Sleekums probably gave you... I'm not sure about the specifics for buying things. Um, I think you have enough to like buy trade goods, whatever we kind of need. We'll play it by ear, and then maybe maybe it's like use a maybe it's like a treasure die or something like that. Maybe like like a usage die that might go down, or maybe like two like two two kind of uses for buying uh, buying items. 
Hmm. I'm talking about personal supplies. Take take the personal supplies that make sense. Nothing like super rare or, or obtuse. Mm -hmm. But um, in general, when you're talking about like trade goods is kind of the part I'm thinking of when you could probably get two extra things researching. Sure. Um, for example, um, chitin caps are in are in supplies, um, as well as uh, joy worms. Uh, chitin caps. Uh, in fact, um, I can tell you this right now. Uh, chitin caps. Uh, you you hear that um, the lime matriarch, so one of the nomads out there, one of the citrus nomads and the lime nomads. Uh, a matriarch is a bear is it will be paying uh pretty good money for for a chitin cap there's no uh, market research there needed um i i would just give that to you for free um but there there's way more profit to be made though with uh joy worms which are uh empathetic uh symbiotic worms uh that are sometimes uh given to either like servitor beasts or even like workers that make you just pacified or just like content with doing boring menial tasks. So uh, I think some of the porcelain looking, uh, porcelain princes would for, definitely want those. We're looking for at least probably five sacks of supplies per person, especially if we're detouring to lime nomads, right? That's that's four plus a couple of half a bonus or so for making sure that we're not going to all die. But that is also, we're not taking anybody else. We can yeah. also forage at some points if we have to. Have you seen our stats? <laughs> well, yeah. that's think, why I think there's a good chance we all die on the first luck check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly uh, I'm saying if we don't have to forage, I would rather avoid it. Right. Oh, well, well, we can just take turns eating each other. Last man standing. You can cannibalize <laughs> dead party members. So, yeah, I think... Adam, you were saying five or six per person? Yeah, if we mm -hmm. do five per person, that ends up being 15. If we do... Which means that we have, like, eight mules or whatever if we're not dragging sacks around okay. all the time. Right. Sure. I'm good with that. And if we have the cash, then we might as well go for something better than a mule. Um, just because it'll carry more and be less things that we have to worry about trying to keep in the party. Mm -hmm. Don't you think Grant? I think so. I'm trying. I'm trying to make the case. Yes, uh, here's yeah. Here's, uh, and not sure if Eric's clarified it yet. One way that we handled it was, whoever financed the trip, wants a thirty percent margin. Meaning, yeah, whatever we take or they give us, we're gonna have to make that plus thirty percent on top of it. Oh, so yeah, we use that for financing just to say. Oh yeah, we'll take this big thing, but we'll have to come back with a lot of loot in order to pay them back, or they'll break our thumbs. Um, yeah, so I don't know how we're going to work it out. Um, keeping track of this meticulous detail won't be my strong suit. I can help the best I can. It's easier with the sheet. Um, but that's in progress. Th th yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think, yeah, I think they're willing to foot the bill. Uh, your immediate cash investment of a certain amount of money. And then they expect something on top of that. Yeah. Uh, it like maybe, maybe it's like some sort of percentage um, until it's paid for sure. And it's probably is pretty outrageous. I like 30%. That seems pretty good. So yeah. looking at our options here, it seems like we, instead of uh, mules, what we may want is hand carts. Uh, because for each of those, we carry three sacks. So if we go all the way there pushing our own wheelbarrows, uh, we're doing one better than ponies or mules. Hmm. I mean, it's kind of pitiful, but... It's not that bad. Can I um, at least push you for a small wagon? 
I mean, I'm not the one who has the money. Let's see, a small but, wagon, small so, wagon, yeah. uh, 200 cash. Okay, that's not that much more. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's more than a handcart, but compared it to... It includes a, the uh, mule. Yeah. I think... Um, yeah, because I don't... Like, I wish I, w- I would have uh, thought about a little bit more about how much money Sleekums would have given you so you can, like, actually deduct that kind of stuff. So, like, right now, it sounds pretty good. Um, I think it would make pretty uh, make some, some sense here, Lock Loin, that if you wanted to, you could probably get some skeleton porters being you know you know necromancer law you're chartered to have them. yeah they're 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 cheap la- labor yeah. so we got to get some skeleton porters to carry some sacks for us and we could <laughs> sit in the hand carts as they push it <laughs> yeah i mean uh, how, but ske- they are slow though how yeah. fast do you want to be because a zombie porter is the same cost it's even slower but it does carry two sacks <laughs> but you are eating more because you're waiting longer to get between places like yes. at some point no, we're we're good. I think we get a team of skeleton porters. I'm naming these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say we've we've got the group, does how much cheaper does that make it? Does that make it effectively free? Are they on retainer with the legal firm? There are they're legal retainer for sure. So for any anything harm that comes to it, that's your business eats the eats the cost there, Grant. All right. So that's like a couple dozen skeleton porters. A couple dozen? We're talking, we're, well, we're talking all of the sacks for rations. I think but six makes sense. We're also talking the sacks for trade goods. All right. Six skeleton porters? I got gotcha. you. All right. Yeah, the firm, we're good for that. <laughs> I, I got to name all six now, though. Yeah. <laughs> Can so, we push for six skeleton porters? Are they all pushing handcarts? Is that not not each of them? No, there's you can get three handcarts. So so are we doing this rather than the caravan itself? We're like the rather than the default. I think caravan? we're basically building our own because the yeah the we're starter, putting our own. the the small trader yeah okay. doesn't really meet our needs. Oh uh then then let's say we can get no then uh, let's let's you can get more handcarts. Let's see how many. Uh, yeah, you can get up to six. So we have all our zombies pushing, or skeletons pushing hand cards. Hand cards. So yes. You just have six skeletons and warehouse carrying your stuff they're, across they're, the, the grasslands. Yeah. So their names are <laughs> Egon, Angus, Magnus, Malcolium, Ian, and Fargus. <laughs> These are our good Scottish Highland skeletons. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, yeah. That's what we got. Lock Loin, who did you bring today? Well, I dug up Egon, Agus, Magnus, Malcolium, Ian, and Fergus. <laughs> okay. That gives oh, us those fellows. <laughs> They're good skeletons. They're good skeletons, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other issue I have with just skeletons and handcarts is that if <laughs> shit goes down, then we don't have something to jump behind. And I'd, I'd buy. get skeletons no. to combine. There's not <laughs> this circle the wheelbarrows. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're attacking. Skeletons form devastator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm I'm here for that. Okay. So can I can I get at least a small wagon? Is is that too much? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this your own wagon? Oh, it's got to be my own wagon. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, this is, you want your own hand wagon? Is that the deal? No, no, no. Small wagon. A 200 cash small wagon, animal included, carries six sacks, draft animal. Like something that is tall enough that I could hide behind. That is what I'm looking for. Ah, uh, okay. Um, that's number 14 in the transports yeah. list. Um, yes. Um, can make a charisma check for me. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. Have to actually roll in this game. I forget. Boop. So, uh, not great. <laughs> Colored me surprised. I've got the, I've got the broken wagon that they're like, yeah, yeah, get it out of here. The CFO of Lachlan Associates and Esquire, you know, Lachlan Esquire and Associates comes out. Whoa, no. whoa, 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 whoa. Company card. 
<laughs> uh, no, so um, you're 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 fine there. Um, let's just say uh, maybe like the night before we get ready to head out, um, the seer visits you in the dream. Only it's not uh, the seer immediately as they show up. So it's not your comrade. It's a uh, porcelain faced uh, visage. Um, that's in this, that looks about the, as tall as your seer. Like it's almost like a think of um, like a borgified version of your seer, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Who has been taken over uh, by some other uh, entity, and um, you can you hear them. Uh, they don't use the their voice. They're using their the whatever this entity's voice here is, and they look at you and they say, uh, "Doom." And uh, the next battle uh, th- that you ever go into, you're going to have disadvantage in. Sounds good. Uh, no just problem. After after getting that wagon, it's totally fine. It's not related. It's, it's fine. Mm. Yeah, uh, this wagon has definitely seen a uh, battle before. That way, we know it works. Yeah, that's right. Like that's how you got it on the cheap. Like it seems it's, it's a little it's a little rinky. Uh, you, there's definitely uh, bullet holes uh, that it's have been the, patched it's the over. the armor that came back from the run. Like <laughs> we only repair the places that uh, didn't it's, get shot. Yeah. Are, are, are you making uh, a survivorship bias joke? Because that is amazing. Yes. <laughs> Here for you, man. Uh, I love you. Um, you will also get. You will have advantage for something else too. Uh, for making such a good statistical deep cut. <laughs> It's like, why aren't you fixing this part that didn't cause the wagon to break? <laughs> All the wagons that c- came back were intact there. So, mm-hmm. okay. Um, so we have we have squared away. I think our caravan. So we have a small wagon with two one one animal, two animals with it. I I, I don't have the the page open with that. It says a pack, uh, a draft animal. So I assume one draft animal. Sure. So a donkey. Yeah. So you have one wagon with a donkey and mm-hmm. six My skeletons wagon. with wheelbarrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, are they wheelbarrows or hand carts? They're but hand carts. It's, it's a glorified. Thing. It's a glorified yeah. hand. No, have you seen a hand cart in person? <laughs> they're they're pretty big. They're they're sturdy. All right. Move I your mean, it says that each one can take three. Three sacks. Okay. I wanna yeah. I wanna read directly from the book here for a second. Adventuring <laughs> hand cart. A glorified wheelbarrow. Oh, Black and white. Clear Luca, as crystal. <laughs> well, so. we want to play rules that's written. No. <laughs> I mean, that's an adventuring hand cart as well. Like you could yeah. have the non-adventuring version, <laughs> which is just a hand cart. It's not even glorified. So Sage is the ambassador bringing anything or is he just showing up with a hammer and being like, hey, guys. I, I love I mean, that. I think that basically he's showing up and saying like, I've heard you're going in the direction that I need to go. Uh, I offer you my diplomatic immunity in return <laughs> for uh, me coming along with you. Like, you all don't have any guards whatsoever, and this is a relatively dangerous journey. You know, uh, there's plenty of strange uh, ultras, ghosts, and the like around, but we don't like to talk about them. It makes sense to have a have a, a guard and someone willing to. Have a- I, I can't say no to the ambassador. Herodotus is well known in these parts, and it might add add some prestige to this trek of delivering the cat coffee. So kind. <laughs> I mean, I'm. Uh, oh yeah, I think the way that he phrases it is like, I'm offering protection, both uh, political and more direct. As he like hefts his hammer, <laughs> like uh, yeah, I'm, I'm basically your bodyguard, both politically and uh, physically. I love it. Okay. I'm I'm good with that. Do we have all the supplies and everything worked out too? Well, I mean, someone it's tapping just, this somewhere? We're just doing straight. Oh, I'm not writing anything. Down. I wrote down my hand cu- my uh my wagon. That's that's what I that's what I, I wrote took a down. few notes on what we're buying, but uh Oops. or like who we have carrying stuff. So we've got six skeleton porters on retainer uh and their hand carts. So <laughs> that's uh 18 sacks, 18 sacks. load. And then we've got the uh, wagon, 
Wait, are we taking one of the skeletons to push the wagon? Or no? No, sorry, no. The, the wagon has a uh, has a draft animal who okay. is non-skeleton. So that's another six sacks. What's the draft animal's name? Uh, the draft animal is Bill. So okay. Uh, oh, requires a draft animal, but the animal is included in the cost. Actually, right? actually, the the animal is coming from my family, right? Yeah. That's 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 the backstory of this of this card and draft okay. animal. Uh, then the animal's name is also Vesh, Comrade Vesh. <laughs> Comrade Vesh, my favorite ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? I can't believe we have wheelbarrows. This is amazing. Uh, I have skeletons both. pushing wheelbarrows. Uh, I'm liking the feel of this so far. <laughs> okay. Chat called on the and skeleton got... burns. We've got somewhere between 15 and 18 sacks of rations. Skeleters. They're the skeleters. <laughs> they get paid in exposure. <laughs> you know, that kills people in the UVG. <laughs> I know, that's... Oh my god. Okay. Uh, so we've got somewhere between 15 and 18 sacks of rations, depending on whether we feel like we're going to take five, day, five weeks or, or uh, six weeks. Or the other way around. What is it? Two, three, four weeks, or two, four, six, two, four, five weeks per person. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Um, and then we have the uh, cat coffee, which is just one sack. And then yep. what other trade goods do you want to pull so that we can actually make a buck or two? Um, I mentioned there are two that you know the of two already. Types, yeah. Right. These are the ones that don't require any rolls. Uh, so uh, insinuating or inferring that there's more out there. There's chitin caps. Uh, remember uh, the lime matriarch. And the joy worms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lime, lime, the, so the lime nomads really want uh, chitin caps. And uh, I forgot their name um, from the porcelain uh, princes uh, who wants, uh, I think their name's like Celadon 10, I think is what I had. I had to double check my notes on that, but um, Celadon uh, wants jo uh, more joy worms, and joy worms are worth a lot more. Uh, for example, you can expect to get about a hundred cash from the chitin caps, but you can probably get a minute uh five hundred cash from the joy worms. Now, granted, you have to roll when you get to sell stuff what percentage you might be able to make, like X percent higher than what's listed, but those are the base uh, prices. Roll and get higher. Come on. We're we're going to roll and lose money. That's that's what's going to end up happening here. You only uh, live once. <laughs> but if you can get if you can get some of those things, like one of the one of the directions to go is to go for the chitin caps because we're going lime anyways because our bodyguards going there, uh, and just get a ton of it because that's the first stop. And then if we've lost some things along the way, then it's not such a big deal. <laughs> Those hand carts aren't going to pull themselves if we start losing That's skeletons. Right. <laughs> like, oh, I think, uh, yeah, Herodotus is like fed up with this. He's like, I'll carry five of these hand carts if I have to myself. Let's, like, <laughs> enough deliberation. This is a time for diplomacy, not deliberation. Uh, <laughs> no, like, this is seriously good. Like, we, okay. we should definitely do this. Uh, just, yeah. How many sacks total? Grant, That's all. final decision. Uh, we going 15 or 18 sacks? I think we're going uh, 15. Okay, 15 sacks of rations. Uh, and then we have room for another six, seven, eight sacks of trade goods. One of those is coffee. Uh, do you? How much of the uh, other two things do you want? I think we want to go with the uh, uh, the chitin caps. We want to we want to load up on those and take them to the lime nomads. So you want to get more than one? Yes. Six. Because it's a number. I, um, I, yeah, I think as many as a heavy we can. Metal game, so. I think as many as we can get, you know, crank it up to 11, right? So it's like, because we drop them off at the Lime Nomads and they'll probably, they'll have, no, nah, I'm not going <laughs> to. We have room for 24 <laughs> sacks before even we start carrying stuff. And, and we're currently with 
we're at 22 with 15 sacks of rations, one sack of cat cock fee, and six of chitin caps. Okay. He's already got us in his grudge book. Just about yeah. how many sacks we have. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, that sounds good. I also don't want to be carrying around all the super wealthy stuff uh, because that's just more target for bandits and randomness. Yeah, but most of those bandits are probably going to be on like the the low road and the high road and things like that. The short, easy paths. We're going. We're going into the no man's land. I guess, except for the nomads. It's the nomads. <laughs> land. The, nomads yeah. land. the no nomads <laughs> land. Yeah. It's the okay. yeah the limey the limey nomads lands. Okay. Um. So then uh, we we set off on our journey. Um, so then we have to do first week. There's a process for what we do each week here. That is right. So the first thing we do, um, you guys are going slow, right? So keep that in mind. Um, it's going to, I'll roll this in the open, right? You have not made good pace at all, uh, this first week. Um, so you're at, uh, just so you know, I'm keeping a clock going. You're at four out of seven. So uh, the next week, because you go at a slow pace, I'm going to roll another D4. If I get a 7 and that fills in, it's going to take another week of supplies. So, uh, skeletons aren't necessarily the fastest. They're reliable, but not very fast. They don't need anything. That's good. Yeah, and they don't take supplies themselves. But uh, Just keep that in mind. All right, uh, so the first things to do here is I believe we need to do... Sack uh, of supplies. Yeah. I'm I'm reading through what is time. Did you remove uh so everyone so if you remove a, a sack of supplies per human sized person? That is not a skeleton. Yeah. So we so... dropped down to twelve sacks left. Okay. Um can so, so I try to put stuff into the caravan sheet as a as a quick thing. Um if we want to track oh, stuff solid. there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so deduct everyone deducts their uh, set of supplies. Uh, the next thing to do is uh, one of you is going to be denoted for the misfortune check, which is a charisma check. <laughs> uh, I can't be the same person twice. I'll Can't start with it. I, is, oh. is applies to the whole caravan. Yeah, we definitely want we'll Grant to start there. with it because yeah. he's got the worst and we might as well get the worst one out of the way first. Sure. All right. <laughs> Lockloin rolls out of bed. I haven't bathed today. Time to see how my luck goes. All right, let's let's do this. Normal, nothing. Ah. Failed, of course. <laughs> ah, cool. Um, I think maybe you're not used to helping out and carrying so many goods and all that stuff. Uh, you you gain a sprained shoulder, uh, which has slowed the cart again. Um, taking a day. We are five out of seven. So you almost have gone two weeks, but really have only gone one week. It has been the very, very, very slow journey uh, for passing the time. Um, taking our time. Yeah. The next thing to do here, I realize how much I need to do to automate this. It's cool. Encounters. Uh, this, is, this is the Thanks. learning first, part. Yeah. First session. Um, so then next up, I believe, is encounters. And uh -huh. I want to see how encounters are done. Uh, or excuse me, it's a misfortune. Uh, wait, we did misfortune. We did misfortune. Um, and if the misfortune causes an encounter, or if there's an encounter on the road, like a specific one, then we'd hit it. Uh, so other people in the, in the chat, this is page nine. And other people in general, this book is on Kickstarter. He posted the, the Luca posted the main one and... It is the link that you will get on the Kickstarter isn't the exact same, but all of these rules are. So if you want to kind of generally follow along, this is pretty early in the book and it's a very normal process. So, but yeah, so I think it's mostly just up to you, Eric, whether we've got encounters or not. Uh, yeah. Um, we could just die right unfortunately, here. Then... Unfortunately, you guys are slow moving and uh, that means things 
think you're easy prey. You're just a bunch of skeletons. Skeletons. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, that's it, Grant. Thanks. Ooh, okay. Uh, so this happens at night. Uh, so we're going to zoom in for a minute here. Uh, this might be like the night after you sprain your shoulder and you're feeling better. Uh, Lock loin. Um, the, the sky is completely starless as, as per usual here. Um, not too much light. Uh, however, um, in the distance, uh, can't be, can't be seen through sort of the, the, the dark haze that lings, that hangs around at night. Um, but the, the clacking sounds of metal, uh, the, the idling of like an engine, uh, can be heard steadily. Um, uh, the grass around it is getting kind of kicked up and kicked up like uh, golf clubs are kind of just you know hitting the whiffing and eating the earth constantly with the with this hum of this engine. Uh, something is coming close to you. Probably some sort of machine. It's coming your direction. Um, I think you are the one on watch at this point of the night. They've left Lockloin on watch. Watch. I don't even have eyes. We, all, we only sister. have three people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, my crab was useless. Um, <laughs> you don't have it's been it's life. literally been blinking pink as fast as it can. Like <laughs> <at years ago. laughs> it's trying to help out. Um, let's see. Um, so there's something approaching. We're not too sure what it is. Yeah, we've. Um, I I think I'm gonna try to. I think I'm going to pull out my green brick. Yeah. And I'm going to <laughs> put it on the back of my crab and say, crab, go that way at a 90 degree angle from us. Maybe you can lure it that way in the, <laughs> into the grasses. <laughs> Just kind of lure it. Go, little fr crab, go. Oh, yeah. As like a little bait? Yeah, yeah. So it's like an angler fish, right? So create yeah. a light. It's, and this is a this is my magical item for having no hit uh, points. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is a great idea. Um, however, um, what's the relationship with your crab like? It's your familiar. Yeah. It's it knows what it's doing, and it's it's like I don't want to be put on the line. Or is this like is it used to being put on the line? Is this is it like I will follow you to the ends of the literal literal ends of the earth, uh, crab? Hmm. You know, like how like what kind of what's the relationship here with this crab? Oh, you've played with me and familiars before. Yeah. You know, we are blood brothers through and through. So uh, this game, I won't ride sell or die. Die. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a so ride or die moment with this crab. So when you, yeah, when you give it, when you give it this rock, it knows what it's doing and it looks at you and it's like that serious kind of look like, like innocent eyes being like, I will, this is bad. And it's going to put a little I'll like, I'll make it up to you. I'll make it up to you. I, 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 I'll send one of the other ones with the brick next time, but this time it's your turn. It's you trying. It. it puts, it puts a little claw out. Like it's, <laughs> it's giving you the claw. Yeah. Don't do uh -huh. that. I close this little claw on it. Don't you hear it? <laughs> no, go, 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 go. I'll make it up to you. And if I have to, I'm going to, it goes, my no, no, it's, it goes, <laughs> you trying to white fang your own crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah it, it it goes a little bit further away and looks back are you sure you know and then it's like no go get get now go i hate you go <laughs> yeah and uh the the crab uh you see everyone uh so the camera kind of sees in this dark haze with the whistling of the grass uh we see this dual pink and green blinking uh crab skull of the light uh and it remains to be seen if if this uh entity this sh this mechanical stranger is uh going to be um <laughs> persuaded by that uh do you have any other lights on in the camp or is that like really the only light like is it really like yeah, a solid decoy that's that's the only light okay that makes perfect sense okay so it's the only it's the only light um let's see if it uh let's see how good this works um let me let me roll we roll a die. Yeah, uh, it takes the bait. Um, there is a rummaging 
uh, as the, the click clopping of the, the ground getting kicked up comes nearby. Uh, you can see from the light uh, from your all, because you're all in, in darkness, right? And really like your only light is the, these crabs here. Um, everyone else is definitely woken up by the by the sounds, <coughs> by the way, of this stirring of this of this machine. Um, this this clacking, um, it almost looks kind of like it's made. It's not like a like a bullet as the way it's like it's bullet as it's like swimming through the earth or anything like that. Instead, it, it's more like a a large um, six legged like oxen. But uh, instead of it being like a like a full animal beast, it seems it seems to be like a like a tractor like contraption. Uh, and rather than having large wheels and stuff like that, it seems to have these like gro uh, grotesque, awkward, misshapen feet that seems to just be like cycling through the earth as it moves awkwardly, almost kind of like weird uh, insect legs is the way they're they're arched and they're just clicking up and uh, kind of just running over each other. Um, you can see it has sort of like these teles uh, telescopic eyes kind of all over it and they're kind of like zooming in and out. Uh, it's hard to see like exactly, but it's sort of like the shape that you have of this thing. Uh, it's probably the size of your wagon um and it just pounces on the light and you can only you can only see like just the shadow of this thing on top of this little light and you just see underneath it just the faint silhouette of the dual colors of the pinks and the green um it doesn't seem like it's eating it it just seems like it cat like it caught it and it's and and you just hear the the the, the clacking machine go what do y'all do so it seems it seems in, super distracted by it. I'm in the wagon. Uh, I'm in the back, and I've got my bow out. And I'm like, that will be really useful for carrying stuff. Wizard, you know how to tame one of those things, right? We want to, we want to try to bag over its head and break it like a horse. We're going to ride around. <laughs> Throw the bag over. I'll grab it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the breaking the horse type, like, but uh, I need some cover in doing this. All right. Um, you with your bow, me with, with, with my single magic missile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. If you, guys, if you guys can cover me as I get close to it, I'll grab it and hold on until it's tired. Okay. Um, so before we do initiative, that sounds good. But if you want to sneak up to it, you definitely going to have to sneak at it. But it has uh, you have just regular dice. You won't have advantage because it's distracted. It's dark as hell, and you can't really be super stealthy in the dark going towards it. So it kind of n neutralizes the advantage and disadvantage there. Okay, that's fine. Um, All right. Right, because the other basically, can you get there before it being uh, discovered? And if you're discovered, then we just do initiative. Okay. So uh, I assume I'm rolling dex. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Yes, stealth de yeah. Uh, dexterity. Uh, yeah, this this isn't gonna work. I'll tell you now. Uh, this, yeah. Let's see. This biomechanical spider hippopotamus tractor thing with weird oh, telescopic frog oh, eyes. Oh, oh, you got a seven and seven. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. You get you get close behind it, right? Like you're you you have been slowly uh, hammer out. Uh, ready to go, uh, and then there's like a twig or something, and it cracks, and it immediately turns around, and it reels its mouth, uh, and its mouth, you can see there's numerous little, like, gears and some sort of, like, coiling tongue uh, in oh. it. Uh, yeah. Um, initiative. Initiative. <clears throat> Are we going to take that as Sage's initiative? Uh, no, I think we're actually going to call it tonight, and I think that's a good point to call it, and we'll start uh, next week with combat. Sounds good. All right. Rockin'. Yeah, so uh, everyone, thanks for hanging out with us. I know it's a short session. I think these sessions are going to be... Oh, I uh, I went off and uh, you probably didn't hear me for the last second. I'm super sorry. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that I can't talk on the other screen. Whoops. I my bad. Um,
what I was saying, so just to repeat myself real quick, is that you can kind of expect these sessions to be somewhere between two two hours, two and a half ish hours, where uh, we're all going to try to complete a little caravan journey or expedition, or at least a, a significant set of it. Uh, so it should feel more like uh, each session is kind of a comic book than necessarily like a, a full length adventure. Um, I feel like that kind of fits the the vibe of the show a bit more. Uh, expect more automated uh, procedures, so it's more easier to follow along for you all. Um, but thank you so much for hanging out as we did character creation today. I know it was a little bit uh, slow and and just getting everything set up, but that uh, all of those kinks will work themselves out. Uh, yeah, so let's let's do some outros. Um, Vesh, Adam, comrade. Yeah, uh, I'm I meant still the mule. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still Adam, the uh, the other Adam, uh, and uh, I will totally get my camera set up so that you can see some sweet blinking lights and stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you want to find me, I'm on, I'm hacker blinks on Twitter and on SoundCloud, uh, and on Bandcamp and on a couple of other places as well. Uh, Sage you. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter old underscore for trend with an E in the old. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best place to find me. Uh, because my personal website is really hard to explain the link to because it's, Sivor Feneblin, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons monster, monster, which nobody can spell, but uh, it's my personal website, so who cares? Yeah, follow me on Twitter. If I ever post anything, it'll, it'll go there. Uh, Grant? Hey, everybody. My name's Grant Ellis. Once more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wise Papa Grant. I will be at PAX East uh, every day for the rest of the week. Uh, I will be moderating a panel on historical and visual transgender narratives and tabletop role-playing games. And I will be a special guest on a panel uh, all about role-playing identities other than your own, which could very well be any role-playing character. Um, but yeah, hit me up if you see me there, say hi. Um, I'd love meeting all of you people from the Twitch and the Twitterverse. Yeah, cool. And uh, last and certainly least is me. I'm Eric, Eric Fulgaris everywhere. <laughs> uh, I play role-playing games a lot. And I work for Roll Twenty. Uh, so if there's anything, uh, I don't know. I, I I love I love that I was able to do this game uh, for you all. Uh, if there's anything that you think um, would be beneficial, uh, hit me up here on uh, you know here in chat or on Twitter or somewhere about how I can improve the the stream here, so you can learn and follow along more. Because I know we're using uh, the Black Hack instead of like a normal uh, like D and D. So maybe there's some knowledge there, or like anything else I can explain about the ultraviolet glass lands, all uh, that kind of stuff. What what would you like to see? Um, so anyways, yeah, uh, that's it. Um, yeah, uh, that's all I got right now. So take care, everybody. We're out of here. Bye. See ya.